In this case, we will demonstrate a FACO from beginning to end. Uh, in, it's largely unedited. Uh, here you can see the double ring on the cornea, which has been made with the Banaji double ring Rexus marker. Uh, centered on the visual axis, as you can see here from the light reflex in the center of these two rings, not on the center of the pupil. If you can, if you notice here, the s rings are slightly decentered nasally, because mo in most people the visual axis is decentered nasal and inferior. It is my belief that we center the rexis on the visual axis rather than on the center of the pupil. And to that end, we have invented the uh, Rexus marker. Now you see the double ring here. The double ring is uh, basically a road map. You have to stick within the inner and outer ring to make your Rexus of the correct size and of the correct orientation. Here we start the Rexus from the center towards the periphery. And you can see here we start turning the corner just about between the first and the second ring. It is important that you stabilize the globe with the left hand using the eye lock. Uh, if you do not, then it will be very difficult to, to technically stay between these two rings. As you can see here, unfortunately, the rexus is wandering off to the pupil. But using the little technique, we pull the rexus, we pull the flap of capsule towards the center of the pupil. In doing so, the rexus turns the corner and we have avoided the nasty step of the rexus wandering off towards the zonules and then leading to perhaps future complications such as uh, splitting of the posterior capsule and perhaps even a nucleus drop. The rexus being over, we burp out a little viscoelastic from the anterior chamber so that there is enough place physically for the fluid wave to pass behind the lens. Using the Banaji cannula, we go towards the equator, gently inject, and we get a fluid wave immediately. The lens is decompressed now, and with the same cannula, we hook the tip into one end of the lens and rotate it, and now into the other end and rotate it. If the fluid wave has been observed to go around the equator and come out through the rexus opening, you will 100% be able to rotate the, the nucleus with the greatest of ease. Note that we have hydrodissected and rotated the lens with the same cannula. My preferred technique of phaco emulsification is to make a small, short, deep central groove. As you can see, it takes just four strokes of the phaco to reach the depth we desire. We go towards the equator, come back towards the phaco tip, and separate. Here it is a little daunting to go under the rexus and towards the equator because the tip of the chopper cannot be visualized. But with a little practice, uh, one gets confidence doing this and it is really the quickest and safest way to chop. The danger uh, is that we do not chop deep enough and we tend to get very superficial scratches in the, s in the surface of the lens, in which case it will not crack. If you notice here, I'm chopping deep and we are coming towards the phaco tip and actually touching the phaco tip. Also note that we are not using any phaco power during this step. Now the lens has been chopped into six different quadrants and uh, it is now being phaco uh, aspirated into the phaco tip. We are using the Ozil phaco handpiece with the Alcon phaco machine. This whole step from beginning to end, from the beginning of the surgery till this point in time, has just taken 4 minutes and 15 seconds. Aspirating the cortex now is an easy job with the bimanual I and A. If you notice, there is a small plaque of cortex sitting right at the at the bottom of of the of the bag and using the capsule polish mode on the console we gently aspirate this cortex into uh, the pot 
we are wary and fully aware that that last bit of cortex might have a nasty surprise behind it in the form of a weak capsule so one takes uh, it very gentle at that stage we are using the Alcon IQ aspheric IOL here and this demonstrates loading into the Alcon cartridge I think it is the D cartridge when we enter the anterior chamber uh, with the IOL the globe is supported and counter pressure is given by the eye lock in the left hand and uh, you can see that the globe remains rock steady as the IOL enters the eye uh, after the IOL is rotated into the bag I lift one pole of the IOL up towards the dome of the cornea and uh, go behind uh, the IOL with the irrigation handpiece and above the IOL with the aspiration handpiece this way we set up an eddy current in the anterior chamber and all the viscoelastic behind the IOL is washed above the IOL and then into the aspirating part of the aspirating handpiece it is a simple maneuver and very safe because you cannot aspirate the posterior capsule into your port during this step then I go into the anterior chamber with both uh, hand pieces above the IOL and aspirate whatever uh, remaining viscoelastic is left in the anterior chamber once this is done I, I um, place a little carbocol in the anterior chamber just a little squirt and then uh, hydrate the wound with the Banaji cannula it's the same cannula we used for hydro dissection and nucleus rotation and you can see here it fits so snugly into the wound this is what the cannula was initially designed for and then later modified to be used as a hydro dissection cannula we can also pressurize the anterior chamber using the same cannula and with uh, subsequent versions we will be able to do much more Thank you for your kind attention.